Has your favorite gacha game been lying to you? Taking advantage of you? Abusing your trust? Scamming you? That is what we're gonna take a look at today. Do companies manipulate RNG for profit? Short answer, yes. Longer answer, how frequently and by what percentage do they lie to us and manipulate RNG for profit. How are companies regulated when it comes to RNG? By law, they have to show the percentage chance of just a summit. They can tell you it's 1% for a Lego, and on top of that, they develop the game. I'm just speaking out of pure fantasy. These games are designed for pure money, to try every angle and mental manipulation to suck every single penny out of you. Yet I'm still addicted and play every day. I feel like we all are. I play Nige, Blue Archive, Ark Knights, Path to Nowhere, currently playing Ether Gazer. Five games I literally log into every single day. Yeah, I have a problem. What's to stop them from putting a switch that they can flip to manipulate what you get? It's not like there are gotcha police going around to different games and watching them, making sure they're honest. I know that one company is catching hate right now from this, but I think they're talking about Nexon. I know Nexon, like a couple months ago, was fined millions of dollars. I think. If I recall, they made like a billion dollars from manipulating their rates and they were fined only like 10 million. So that was negligible for them. And really, if you think about it, is a giant W and will probably result in them continuing to manipulate their players and their rates in the future. Really what stops them from just doing what they want behind the scenes? Nothing. Some of these games are making $30 million a month. I don't think they care about a measly fine if caught. I just feel that a lot of these companies would be stupid to not manipulate behind the scenes. Like, why wouldn't they? Is there a gacha company with the God-fearing devs who walk the path of goodness and develop their game purely for fun with zero manipulation? Probably not. I'm not complaining, basically just shower thoughts. I'm, I'm glad to know that I'm not the only one that comes up with such ridiculous thoughts when in the shower or on the toilet playing gacha games. <laughs> so again, my thought here is that Probably the overwhelming majority of studios manipulate their rates to an extent. Now, I'm not saying all do. I'm not saying they manipulate to or by a large margin, but it just seems ridiculous to think that they wouldn't. Or maybe they just don't, and we all just happen to have terrible luck. But let's go into the comments and see what other people are thinking and see if there are instances of studios being caught red-handed. Before we do though, I wanna take a moment to thank my incredible patrons over on Patreon who allow for me to continue to do dedicated videos like this every single day. You guys are phenomenal and I truly appreciate all of your guys' support. Nexon has, yeah, and here, here immediately, th this is what I was talking about, how Nexon was fined. Apparently, they've been fined multiple times for manipulated and misleading rates. They made 440 million over 10 years. Okay, so it wasn't a billion, it was half a billion. For selling Cube's Maple Story, and we're only fined $9 million. Due to regulation, that was the high end of possible fine. Wow, <laughs> we made half a billion dollars and we're fined a whole 9 million. Yeah, that's definitely gonna stop us in the future. We were fined. We weren't prosecuted. We weren't t jailed, imprisoned. We just got given a tiny little fine. That's it. The fine, of course, being 2% of their total revenue over that 10 year period. Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, War of Visions also had a scandal with manipulated rates apparently. Square Enix apologizes for violation of gotcha laws in Final Fantasy War of Visions. This was from 2021. Even studios as large and profitable as Square Enix engages in these kinds of activities. They probably do, the problem is proving so. You really, I feel like you can't prove it. Oh, hey, look, it's Condi. The question isn't if, it's how many and how badly are they doing it? Which again, is kind of what I said at the beginning. I feel like the majority, the overwhelming majority do. I just, you know, to like, to like what extent do they do it? Is it by a small margin? Are they grossly inhibiting the number of characters you can get or gear that you can get? depending on how much you spend, how much you've already spent, how long you've been playing. Like, I don't know what kind of parameters are involved. Companies will do anything for profit. I mean, I don't think that's entirely true. If it were, 
I feel like Hoyo and Genshin would be a little more rewarding to their players. It depends on the country. South Korean gacha games have several instances of rate manipulation only until recently in October. Companies were mandated by law to start showing gacha rates. Is that true? Interesting. Do people break the law? Obviously. Let's say you can get fined for $10 million. By scamming before you get exposed and get fined, you get a billion dollars. Would you do that? I 100% would. I would lose only 10 million after all. But at the same time, once you're, you are publicly acknowledged by your community and various communities as engaging in activities like this, your reputation is going to be tarnished. You don't know if you're going to be capable of recovering from this. Like, sure, that money sounds great. But at the same time, this isn't net profit. I mean, you probably lose half of that to taxes. You're going to have to pay all your employees. I don't think... Nexon necessarily had a $440 million net profit. So, you know, in retrospect, thinking back, that 9 million might have been more damaging than I originally thought. Sometimes they do. The thing is, if they get caught, it'll be a huge disaster, not only in revenue, but in reputation, like what happened to Nexon not long ago. So I would like to believe that most don't do it. This is exactly what I said right? It will tarnish your reputation, especially if your goal isn't just to purely make money. If your goal is to be a studio that creates games because you're passionate about the development of video games, then tarnishing your reputation for a bit of profit wouldn't be worth it. But at the same time, if you're willing to risk the reputation of your studio and yourself for money, then you're probably not really very passionate about developing games. Something I often wonder is if gotchas do positive manipulation as in increasing rates in certain circumstances. For example, giving new players more luck on average to hook them or giving people who whale increased odds to motivate spending. I can see people reporting bad rates, but who's going to complain when they get unusually lucky? Yeah, so this is actually something that I've speculated for a while, right? And that is that when starting a new game, you typically tend to have better luck. So when starting a new gotcha game, you tend to get significantly more high rarity units than you do the longer you play. And that is because seeing the frequency of those characters as a return for your time investment, as a reward, motivates you to play the game. There have been so many people that have quit playing a gacha game because they don't get either the character they want or they don't get any decent rarity units like in One Punch Man World recently. That is a prime example of players quitting because they got nothing. If you get given multiple max rarity units that are actually attractive, powerful characters that you can actively make use of, then you are motivated to continue playing it. And then they might reduce the rate of unit acquisition the longer you play to tempt you to spend more because you need additional dupes to power up the characters that you were given early on because you need to create additional teams, expand your roster. This is how they hook you and keep you spending. But that's just speculation. That's just a theory that I have. Yes, most definitely, at least in regards to boosting rates for young and returning accounts, I think I can get away with that legally as opposed to reducing rates, which would rain down and help. So yeah. This person, as I scroll down just a little more, has the exact same thought process that I do. Boosting rates for accounts that are in their infancy and then reducing rates at a later date. So I am curious. I mean, evidently everyone here seems to think that companies do engage in this. I'm sure a lot do, but I'm curious what you guys think. Do you think your favorite gacha game engages in rate manipulation? Do you think that they boost the rates for newer accounts and then reduce rates the longer the account is active. I'm genuinely curious. Let me know down in the comments below. Now, if none of this is of any interest to you though, absolutely no problem. I got you covered with two different videos on screen right now that hopefully might be more up your alley.